Right. Hi there, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to share a few slides before we get into a demo of this uh, new interface we're going to talk about today. So we are going to talk today about uh, our newest interface or our newest code, which is called OpenMC. So uh, as I'm sure you are all aware, uh, our Serepo product uh, holds a, hosts a suite of uh, interfaces for various codes that are relevant to accelerators. Some of our more popular ones are codes like Elegant and Opal. Uh, and within that subset, we have some uh, X-ray optics codes like Shadow and SRW that are quite popular. Uh, but today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit outside, maybe accelerator adjacent, I'd say. Uh, so this is a neutron transport code called OpenMC. So OpenMC uh, is an open source uh, neutron radiation transport code. It's written in modern C++ uh, with MPI parallelism, and it's got a very nice Python API. Many other neutrino transport codes uh, are written in old Fortran and date back to the 70s. This is a, a new development. It is actively developed uh, with an open source uh, contributor list of, of greater than 50 contributors. Uh, it's mainly supported by the Advanced Scientific Computing Research Office of the, of the Department of Energy and also the Exascale Computing Project. The uh, main uh, owners of this code are Argonne National Lab, uh, collaborators of ours. Uh, and it's got a very nice, uh, efficient way of handling uh, geometries, uh, complex geometries. So uh, what I'm going to go through today is, is how we uh, visualize models in OpenMC using our interface, how we can assign material metadata, which is uh, often a very um, tedious task that's made much simpler with, open, with our interface. And we're going to construct some tallies and view the simulation results. So we're, we're proud to show this for the first time in a webinar. Um, is this interface for OpenMC. OpenMC, as I said, is open source. You can go uh, view the, the source here, as well as all the issues and, um, and pull requests. It's been extensively benchmarked against other mainstream codes like MCNP. MCNP, MCNP is particularly difficult uh, in terms of its uh, license. It's got a restrictive license and it's export controlled. OpenMC doesn't have any of those uh, problems. Um, We've exposed many features uh, within the Serepo GUI. Uh, so there is a, a DAG MC geometry visual visualization. I want to talk about this for just a second. So uh, often when you're trying to run um, radiation transport codes within some complex geometry, you might have uh, a CAD model uh, so in engineering drawing. Um, for our interface here, uh, to be able to visualize it, you need to convert this into a, a DAGMC format. So DAGMC is documented at the link here, but basically it uses this uh, third-party application uh, called Qubit uh, from Coreform or, or Trellis, which is a version that's available at National Labs, to do a conversion from this CAD model to this DAGMC model. Um, that's just one fine point here. We're, we're working on some other ways to, uh, to upload geometries without having to go through this intermediary, but at the moment, this is this is what you have to do to use the interface. Um, let's see, we're also working on a couple other features that uh, we'll talk about hopefully in future webinars. We're working on some weight window generation. Uh, there are folks that are uh, power users for radiation transport codes. This, this is probably uh, something you're familiar with, so we'll, we'll, we won't explain that all the way here, but um, uh, keep an eye out for that both in the interface and for future webinars. So uh, OpenMC, uh, if you go to our serepa.com page, is listed in our supported codes. It's down here. Uh, if you run into any issues, I encourage you to go visit our Slack and, and talk to us there. That way, uh, any number of people can address your problems or bugs or anything that you might find or just general questions. And that, also that way, they're archived for future users as well. So uh, the very first demo we're gonna talk about today is very simple. I, I just wanted to show a very simple cartoon of this here before we pop over to the interface. Uh, this, this demo is just an isotropic neutron source in space uh, surrounded by air and next to a big copper block. And so as you might imagine, just from looking at the cartoon, 
uh, neutrons are going to um, move isotropically, isotropic, isotropic directions, excuse me. Uh, and some of them are going to enter the copper block and they're going to uh, see this more dense material and interact in that copper. So after that explanation, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. Pop over to another browser. All right, so when you go to our uh, OpenMC page, uh, the first thing you're going to see is our workspace here. So you can create your own simulations, uh, import DAGMC files up here in the top right, uh, organize things in folders, make new simulations. Uh, these four examples are pre-populated for all users. So if you're following along at home, uh, you should see these as well. We're gonna click on this uh, Aurora one here. So this is going to load our geometry uh, in a 3D representation. So we can see this here. So we have this uh, copper block that's uh, in yellow. And we have some air here, uh, which is in a very light purple. This is uh, visualized here in this window in uh, perspective mode. There's a button here to, to toggle between that and orthographic mode. So let's just keep it here for a second. We can click and drag this and look around and inspect it. So we can see that this is an oblong um, rectangle here. It's, it's square in one cross section on the other. We can uh, zoom in, uh, not too much more to see here if we do that. We can snap this to uh, some number of um, axes representations here. Also, I'll note you can see this little dot here with the uh, a circle with a dot in it. If you click this again, you get the, the opposite view. So you can look in both towards Z and away from C. Uh, you can rotate and reset with some of these other buttons here as well. Uh, if we look over here at our volumes, you can see that we have two volumes. This is a very simple model. Uh, we can click edit on one of these volumes and see that this is named air, uh, but we've also given it a density that is, that is the density of air. And we've given it uh, some elements, uh, some components here. So uh, we've got nitrogen, which is defined here as an element, uh, oxygen 16 specifically, which is a, a nuclide. So for each component that you add, you can name them as elements, even elements uh, combined into a formula uh, or, or nuclides as well, uh, and argon, and our copper block, is just uh, copper. So one thing I, I'd like to note is that um, this is something that's coming very soon as a new feature. Uh, you, know, you may find it difficult to uh, put in a material such as uh, concrete here from scratch. Uh, there is a, a big uh, PNNL compendium of materials uh, that lists all of the uh, baseline elements and uh, compositions of things like concrete. Uh, we're going to have a Dropbox here that allows you to define concrete, or actually several different kinds of concrete, uh, and auto-populate this, uh, this material information down here uh, without having to do it by hand. So I think that will be a nice time savings, nice convenience for, for folks who are using the interface. Okay, so we have our, our simple geometry. We have our volumes. Um, also note that you can do some nice uh, Visualization tuning here, if you wanted to screenshot this and use it for a poster uh, with these slider bars, and you can also select the colors uh, as you wish. Okay, so we have our geometry, we have our volumes, we have our materials. Uh, let's pop on over to the visualization tab. Uh, here we have a lot of uh, settings that we can configure uh, to run a simulation. So we'll, we'll go through these uh, tabs here in the settings window before looking at some results. So we're going to run uh, 50,000 particles uh, per batch. We're going to run 50 batches. This is in a fixed source run mode, and we're using this ENDF uh, nuclear data, evaluated nuclear data files uh, library here. We'll turn photon transport off. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit more in the next example. So that's in this main settings tab. You can define an arbitrary number of sources. You can add a source uh, very easily. 
you can say that it is uh, from some kind of shape or point source. Uh, what we're using here is a point source. We can see here that this point source is at the origin. Uh, if we go back to our geometry here, we can see that the, the box of copper is offset from the origin. So the source is going to be right about here. Uh, we can define its angular, angular distribution. So we said this is isotropic. It's got some normal energy distribution with a mean value of 15 MeV and a standard deviation of 2 MeV. We're also saying that this is a neutron that's starting with. So OpenMC tracks neutral particles, neutrons, and photons, and not uh, electrons, muons, towers, and those sorts of things. All right, we're going to skip over reflective planes. There's no symmetry we're taking advantage of here. Uh, tallies. So this is how you uh, can uh, accumulate and observe your results. So you can, uh, again, are, add an arbitrary number of tallies to any simulation. Let's look at this one here that we've already defined. So we've given it, given it a name. It's going to keep track of multiple scores uh, within the same filter. So flux and uh, total nuclear heating, so energy deposition. Our filter is going to be a mesh. So we're just going to make a plane in space um, and measure the flux of neutrons that go through that plane. And we're going to segment that plane uh, with, uh, with a mesh. So here in these columns, we have X, Y, and Z. So we're going to have uh, 80 cells in the X direction, 250 cells in the Y direction, and just one in Z. So it's just a plain measurement here. We define the lower left and upper right of each of these uh, ranges to give us this rectangular shape. You can stack filters if you wish. We're not going to here, but you can stack material filter and say, um, in addition to that mesh I defined, I only want to measure of the flux in the copper. You could do that, we're not going to here. Um, okay, so uh, once this is all set up, you could click start new simulation. Uh, I'm I've already run it here. It, it took a minute, 16 seconds. It's a very simple geometry. What comes out of that is, is the, the flux um, uh, that, that tally. Uh, so here I'm going to uh, click on our snap to uh, axes here along the bottom to get the view that I'm looking for. So this is the, uh, the heating from that tally um, uh, through this geometry. So the, the mesh we defined was slightly larger than the cross-section of that rectangular block of copper. And so we can see here that nuclear heating with energy deposition uh, in the air is, is quite a bit less than it is within this copper block. That makes sense because copper is more dense. Uh, this is also um, something we can uh, zoom in on. Uh, we made this fairly fine-grained mesh here. Um, uh, we can also, since it's one, Plane here, we can we can make it orthographic instead of uh, perspective view. All right, so that was one of our two tallies that we uh, we recorded. We can click up here on this pencil and change to the other score to look at the flux. So we'll load that data. And now, if, if we're Observing carefully, maybe we can kind of see the outline of that copper block, but you can see that the flux is, is not uh, so affected by the uh, copper as much as it was the, uh, the nuclear heating. Okay, so you can look, you can record multiple scores on a, on a single mesh with one tally. All right, so I've gone through kind of in great detail uh, this very simple geometry here. So let's look at something maybe a little more interesting. We'll go back up to our workspace and I'm going to load up Takamak reactor. So uh, <clears throat> neutron transport is particularly important for uh, fusion reactor development. Uh, it's those neutrons after all that are carrying the energy away from the, uh, the fusion event uh, inside a plasma. 
So here we have a, uh, a section of a tokamak here, a one quarter section. Uh, this was generated with uh, the uh, Paramac software, uh, John Schimmel's Paramac software. So we can see that we have quite a few more volumes here. Uh, some of these have very simple material definitions. Well, this is a lead lithium blanket here, elements from a formula, so uh, lead and lithium. Some of these are simpler. Here's just a tungsten uh, center shield. Uh, we can turn off all of the volumes and just turn uh, one on. Let's see here. Yeah, to isolate it if we want to inspect it. Uh, we can also, up here with using the pencil again, <clears throat> turn on the edges to see uh, the mesh. Actually, is that not going to show me the mesh? All right, let's try this again. There we go. So we can see the, the underlying meshed geometry here as well. Um, there we go. So you can see just the, uh, the mesh of this curved surface. Uh, this is useful if you're looking to inspect uh, a mesh for maybe some holes or some errors. You may have to go back and regenerate your diagram C model. Okay, uh, let's pop over to the visualization uh, tab again. So. Uh, here we're going to run uh, fewer particles per generation. It's a it's more complex geometry. It's going to take a little more work uh, to uh, track these neutrons through that complex geometry. Uh, small number of batches. Again, we're going to use this Indian uh, evaluated nuclear data file 7.1. It's our library. Our source is going to be uh, more complex. So we have a cylindrical. Uh, independent spatial distribution. So these are all, um, basically the, the documentation for these is, is, is in the OpenMC documentation. This is exactly how OpenMC defines uh, spatial distributions. Uh, so we have the uh, R, phi, and Z distributions of this particular cylindrical source. Uh, it's going to be isotropic from within that source and the energy distribution is a near distribution. So uh, 14 MeV uh, neutrons coming out of uh, fusion events within the hot plasma. Again, neutrons. Uh, reflective planes. So, of course, the tokamak itself is uh, fully cylindrical. Um, but we're only simulating one quarter of that here. That's, that's for uh, that, uh, exploiting some symmetries here to make it more efficient. So we, we want to define a plane uh, along this, these two sides that have been cut. Uh, so which uh, neutrons going out that direction are then reflected back in as if they're coming in from another uh, quadrant. So this is a little bit um, preliminary here. Right now, we can only define planes in this sort of vertical direction. Uh, you can't have any horizontal uh, plane definitions, but uh, coming soon, we'll, we'll be able to um, exploit symmetries and define arbitrary number of reflective planes. Uh, but right now we're just defining two planes on either side of that um, that section uh, for which neutrons are are reflected. Uh, tallies. So we're going to define two tallies here. Uh, tally one is going to uh, to score heating, uh, flux, and absorption. Uh, there are many other. Uh, specific nuclear reaction rates, for instance, many other scores that are available to you. It's really all of the scores that are available within OpenMC. Uh, for this one, we're going to define a mesh that is in the XZ plane, but it's going to have uh, a depth of two in the Y dimension. So it's not going to be just a single plane. It's going to have a little bit of depth to it. And our second tally is going to be uh, recording flux, absorption, and heating. And this is going to be in the XY plane. And we're going to take it just uh, one plane deep in Z. So it's really just a, a single plane here that we're measuring flux through. So we should get two different tallies with two different views of this, um, of this simulation. So 
Uh, this this took about four minutes to run on our system. Uh, and I'll, I'll just show you what we've already simulated uh, with results are what we've already generated. Uh, since I know this is uh, this one is actually too deep, so I'm going to leave it in perspective view. Uh, we are looking at uh, neutron absorption uh, per pixel. Uh, we can um, we can click and drag this. This is going to be a little bit slower. There's a lot of information. Uh, on display here. Uh, I recommend using, by the way, either uh, Safari or Firefox uh, for this particular interface because those are able to access the underlying GPU and make these visualizations work a little bit better. Uh, so we can see here, actually, I'll just click uh, here. We can see that there are two uh, voxels deep here uh, in this plane. Um, you can make more complex meshes that are volumetric. And um, uh, in those cases, we have one uh, neat trick that I want to point out. So uh, up here, you can uh, generate some voxel inset. So this is some percentage, let's say uh, 0.4. And this makes each voxel uh, 0.4, 40% uh, of its actual size. So in this way, you can kind of, if you twist things around, uh, see past uh, other voxels in the space. So if you had, say, a, a cubic uh, mesh filter, uh, you might be able to drag this around and peek at what's happening in the very interior of that without losing the information from the outside. Okay. I'm gonna turn that off. And let's go back to our view here. Because this is two layers deep, I also want to point out that you can make 2D slices with this 2D tab here. So um, if you had some, again, some cubic mesh, you could look at individual slices um, by defining the uh, ranges that you want here and the particular axis you're interested in. All right, now let's go look at that other tally. So to do that, we, we click here to see the other tally we, we defined, T2. Uh, this score here populates with the scores that are available for T2. Now we can find the right view. So now we're looking at a horizontal slice uh, through this uh, Takamak reactor. You can see neutron absorption in the, uh, in the first wall here in the Pudlipium blanket. So the hope is that using a tool like this, uh, someone doing some preliminary studies, say on a, um, a new Takamak design, uh, they might be able to um, optimize their design, uh, optimize where the um, Lead lithium blanket is absorbing those neutrons to maximize energy output for a for a novel Takamak design. So, hopefully, this is an exciting tool for those of you in the um, in the fusion field right now. All right, uh, so that's a walkthrough of two of our pre-populated examples. We have a couple of others here that I will let you uh, play with on your own. But if you uh, try these out, if you have any questions, as I said, please do contact us on Slack. Uh, or if you have some DAGMC uh, models of your own that you can uh, load through the import button up here and play with uh, your own models uh, within our uh, interface here, I'd love to see just a screen cap of that. So, uh, send that to us, let us see uh, what you're able to model uh, with, this, uh, with this app. I uh, would be really interested to see uh, what, what everybody's working on. Um, so with that, I'll see if Jesse has been able to gather any questions. Um, yeah, we do have a couple of questions lined up here. So thank you for that lovely demonstration, Stephen. Um, first question is, 
You mentioned that OpenMC is massively parallel. How parallel are the Srepo simulations? Yeah, so within our interface, uh, these are parallelized. They're running um, on, I believe it's five cores. Uh, one of our goals is to, um, uh, to possibly extend this to, uh, say, NERSC resources if someone has, has NERSC resources at their build at their um, for their use or uh, possibly to AWS if you have a really large problem that you're interested in running uh, using this app that maybe five cores might not be enough uh, please reach out to us let's see if we can figure something out to, to uh, expand the resources that are available here for you thank you and um just a friendly reminder, I did throw the link to our Slack community into the webinar chat here. So go ahead and grab that address. And that's an easy way for you to get a hold of us and um, ask us any questions in the future. Yeah, I also put the links for our YouTube channel in there. That's where our library of content lives. So you can see all of our other webinar episodes up there. And this webinar will be going up there in a week or two. Um, we have time for one more question before we hit our time limit here. Uh, next question in line is, Charged particles aren't tracked in OpenMC. So how are electrons handled that arise from photon-induced pair production? Yeah, so in both of these simulations, I had photon transport turned off. Um, but OpenMC does use uh, a, um, a thick target uh, Bremsstrahlung approximation to convert those electrons all into photons that it will track. So the information is not lost uh, when, when electrons and positrons are, are created. Uh, they're just... Um, with that approximation to so a them. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're right at 30 minutes here, so we are going to deck out for today. But again, thank you for joining us. Please watch your emails. We'll be sending out a link to the recording of this in a week or so. And thank you again to Stephen Coleman for a lovely presentation today. We'll see you guys all at our next webinar. Thanks, everybody. Bye.